Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another morning. We gather together here in this online space, worshipping our Lord Jesus together as a community of faith here at Sunshine Salvos. Now, as a community of faith, we have a little to celebrate today because for those who are a part of this faith community who normally worship as a part of the gathered community, we have the opportunity again a little later this morning to actually come and gather again in worship to do church as we are used to doing it together, gathered in our worship. And as I said, we will be doing that a little later at 10 a.m. We have again that opportunity because the lockdown that we have been in, in Melbourne, a lockdown of two weeks has finished and we are thankful to God for that. It means that there are restrictions that have been lifted, certainly not all of them, and we are still subject to some limitations that are necessary even at this time, but our ability to be able to gather in worship in person has been reinstated and we will be doing that as a community of faith a little later. Of course, that may mean for some of you who are joining us here in this online space that you normally would come and be a part of our gathered community, worshipping together, but it may be that you are living outside of the 25 kilometre radius in which you are permitted to travel to come and worship. And I certainly know that there are a few families within our Sunday faith community who are outside of that perimeter and therefore still cannot come and join our gathered worship. So you might be watching this service this morning in this online space still because of that restriction. And we hope that that geographic restriction will be also lifted soon. Or it may be that you are just a regular part of our worshipping community who enjoys these online services. Whatever the case, I welcome you here this morning on this Sunday, the 13th of June, 2021. We worship, of course, no matter where we are, on sacred lands. This morning, I again acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands upon which I am, acknowledging, of course, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and paying my respects to their elders of the past, those in the present, and honouring the aspirations of future First Nations leaders in our great Southland of Australia. And as a Salvation Army officer, of course, wanting to again state our commitment to the journey of reconciliation and walking alongside our First Nations brothers and sisters in the spirit of reconciliation and achieving justice for them. We continue, of course, at this time, travelling now into the season of winter with another thought that is provided for us by winter, a thought that speaks into our faith, our life, our reality. And it's this reality of winter that often presents us with what I have termed this morning, bare realities. The reality that in journeying through winter means that we are confronted with things that are bare, the ground, life sometimes, reality itself shaped and formed in and through the coldness of winter that really reflects bareness. And so we're going to think a little about that this morning, the bare reality of winter and how you move within that rhythm and find some positive places within that bare reality that we find ourselves in now during the season of winter. As a prayer to begin with this morning, I want to read this thought, and it's entitled, We Have Seen the Darkness. 
Let us pray together. Our God, you know that the night has been deep and long. Chill shadows have fallen upon our hearts and we have seen the darkness creep across the face of the land. And we have felt helpless against the growing darkness, O oh God, and have stood silent and numbed, concerned only for our own loss of light and our seeming powerlessness to change the season. We know, Lord, that despair is ever seeking a home, that love grows cold through fear and bitterness. We too can retreat into indifference, let tears fall unnoticed and harden ourselves to the pain of others. But still, O oh God, there is within us that longing for the light of dawn, for the cracking of night and for the rising of the sun. And so we ask you now, Lord, not for the patience of passivity, but for the endurance and the love that gains its strength from the crucified and risen one who has pierced the darkness, who knows the way and surely is still with us. To the crucified and risen one this morning, we pray this prayer. Amen. There aren't many announcements I have to share with you this morning, only to affirm, as I stated again from last week, that our Red Shield Appeal effort does continue in the online space. I encourage you still to consult our Facebook page where we have our digital door knock page for Sunshine Salvos. There within that page, there is an opportunity for you to become a fundraiser for Sunshine Salvos by promoting the Red Shield Appeal in the digital space. I encourage you to have a look at that and do that. And also perhaps even to make an online donation or direct others to do that. We can still make a difference and still raise necessary money for Sunshine Salvos and the Greater Salvation Army. Our Physical collecting may have finished, but we can still make the effort in the online space. So I encourage you to consult our digital doorknock page and spread the news and encourage others to give as well. There are still some barbecues that are scheduled in terms of fundraising activities for Sunshine Salvos over the course of June. However, there is still a veil of uncertainty as to whether we will be able to proceed with those Bunnings Barbecue fundraisers at this time. It is certainly my express hope and expectation that clarity will be provided on those fundraising exercises and whether they can proceed I'm anticipating to know about that very early in this coming week. And other programs as we have returned from lockdown will be able to resume at Sunshine Salvos, of course, keeping in mind that we always are expected to adhere to COVID safe practices at our Sunshine Salvos church building including our check-in system, QR code scanning, social distancing, sanitising, and doing all the necessary things to keep ourselves and keep others safe. So we will see some of those regular programs that we usually participate in or host returning to Sunshine Salvos for the rest of this month as the lockdown now has eased and we anticipate restrictions continuing to be lifted. That's all the announcements I do have for now. 
I do want to pray a prayer this morning just for a couple of our people who are lamenting and feeling low at this time due to concern and also grieving the loss of loved ones and, and significant anniversaries in terms of the loss of loved ones. And, and this morning I, I want to offer up a prayer for Tan and Tao and their family who only still are coming to terms with and continuing to grieve the loss of Tan's father. But I also this morning think of Diane, Diane Geddes and her family who just very recently have marked the one year anniversary since Diane's mother's passing. So I just want to share a quick prayer for those two families this morning, precious people within our Sunshine Salvos family. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for life. We thank you for the seasons and we recognise that through autumn and winter especially, Lord, there is an air of loss, a cold chill of death that comes in and through those seasons. And that is real for a couple of our families, dear friends of ours at Sunshine Salvos at this time. I want to lift up in prayer, Lord, this morning, Tan and Tao, the Tran family, Ella and Lana, and all the family. I pray that they would continue to be strengthened as they continue to walk through the dark valley of loss and grief in remembering Tan's father. Lord, strengthen them. Give them a sense of your spirit's peace and comfort being with them at this time as they continue to navigate their way into warmer places of fond remembrance as they, as they continue to remember and honour Tan's father. Lord, bless them in their journey of grief at this time. I also this morning think of Diane and her family who mark one year since it was the time of Diane's mother's passing. Lord, I pray in this time of remembrance that you would give Diane a real sense of your peace and comfort with her that you would continue to consolidate all the rich memories that she has of her mum and her dad, that they would continue the process of thawing to become warm. I pray for Diane's family as well, for Thomas and for Will. Lord, I pray that you would also be with them. Lord, we give thanks for the lives that were for what they meant to loved ones, for the impact and the mark that they left on this world, for the positive imprint that Tan's father and Diane's mother were to many people. Lord, I give thanks for their lives and honour them today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture for this morning is taken from another Old Testament prophet. Last week we read from the prophet Joel, and this week we read from the prophet Habakkuk in chapter 3, verses 17 and 19. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, and I read this morning from the New Living Translation. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vine, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful. In the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He will make me as sure-footed 
as a mountain goat and bring me safely over the mountains and in the high places. May God add wisdom to the reading of his word this morning. Winter is a time where we are afforded the space to often reflect on the bare realities that are presented to us in our lives. There seems to be a synchronization within things that happen in our lives and particularly as they connect with the seasons and it is often people's experience when they are journeying through the cold darker months of winter that they also have things that they are going through in their life that really reflect the bare reality of what winter brings. You see, winter has a number of bare realities. You only need to see in the Northern Hemisphere, in cold climates during winter, the way that a lake will move from being a liquid flowing a, a living reality into the bare reality of being frozen, solid, cold, and in some ways from the surface appearing somewhat dead. We know in the fields during winter, those places where there were flowers wildly growing aren't necessarily there that there is just an openness, a barrenness, the bare reality of winter. We see in the trees that have shed their leaves, their clothes, if you like, during autumn and continue into winter, also continuing to become more and more bare. Trees reflect the bare reality of the fact that winter has come. And so we're often faced in life with these moments where we are forced to contemplate the bare realities of our lives, the places that are barren, the places where things are dormant, where things are not necessarily fruitful, the places that appear to be inactive, the places that are cold the places that are bare. Now, God made all the seasons. All the seasons have their place. All the seasons have their purpose. And it wasn't the fact that winter comes as an enemy or someone who is intruded into the cycle of seasons as an unwanted guest God deliberately made winter in the cycle of the seasons exactly the way winter is, because winter is necessary. The bare realities that come to our life, we may even come to a place of understanding one day that even they, even during the hardest, coldest, darkest of times, they also were necessary. There are many bare realities in our life. We've just come out of a two-week lockdown. Another slap in the face, if you like, another dose of bare reality to Victorians. Just a reminder that there is still a real pandemic that is happening, that it hadn't gone away, even though we had enjoyed such a lovely stretch of time where we had been relatively unaffected by COVID-19, but it hadn't gone away. It was still a threat. It is still present. And we have endured the bare reality of two weeks of circumspection, forced hibernation, to the point now where we Enjoy the fact that our lockdown now is lifted, but there are still limitations in what we can do. 
Those are the bare realities of our place in time and location here in Melbourne in June 2021. The bare reality is that we still are struggling to contain a terrible, virulent virus that continues to threaten our well-being. And so the bare reality is that we now come out of that, but we still have to be vigilant. And if you had the opportunity, you could list two, three more, perhaps, of bare realities that are your reality at this time. They may be health concerns. They may be financial concerns. They may be family issues or relational issues. We all have our bare realities to contend with. And winter, it seems, just seems to exacerbate or bring them out or highlight them in some way. Perhaps because the light of day is shorter. Perhaps because the air is colder. Perhaps it's just the nature of winter that lends itself or seems to attune itself into our suffering and our bare realities. Well, the prophet Habakkuk and the Israelites were not unaware and certainly were not removed from their own bare realities. And boy, they had a lot of them over their history and still continue to do, of course. In the time of Habakkuk and at the time of his writing, and especially as it relates to the scripture that I just read, there was a reality within the people of Israel that they were exiled, that they were away from their homeland, that they were not enjoying the normal things of what they were accustomed to, that they were fruitless, that they were removed, that they were exiled. And the text that I read really provides a picture of the land and it's a picture somewhat in synchronization if you like with the season of winter if i reflect on some of those images again we speak about figs fig trees not having their blossoms no grapes on the vine olive crops failing Fields lying empty, flocks of animals dying in the fields, cattle barns empty. They all reflect the fact that there is within this season a sense of loss, a sense of death, a sense of things that are not bountiful and not flourishing. And that was Israel's reality during the time of exile. They suffered, they grieved, and they were moved to long again for a time where they would return to the fullness of what life was and would bring for them. They longed for the change of the seasons out of the bare reality of their long, cold, exposed winter and into the warmer months of life and vitality and a return to things that were fruitful and good. But yet still, they lived in their bare reality as Habakkuk spoke about it. And they had this hope and it's reflected in the text where Habakkuk clearly says yet, yet, and that is such an important one single word. Regardless of all of those things that are present in my reality at this time, in all of the unfortunate and negative bare realities, yet, what does Habakkuk say? Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. In spite of all those things, in spite of winter, I will rejoice in the Lord. 
we look at the surface of things, even in winter, when the fields are barren, when the lakes and the waterways are frozen over. We look at winter in all of its bare reality and can believe, or at least believe the illusion that everything is dead, that nothing is happening, that things are just completely static and that there is no movement. There is no positive way forward. But, you know, even within the season of winter, in the soil that is cold, in the soil that seems unproductive, beneath the surface, there is still things going on. Seeds are regerminating slowly. They are recultivating. They are doing everything to prepare themselves for the season to come. They are shoring up their cellular walls. They are regenerating within themselves. There is activity happening beneath the surface, even in winter. Even in a cold, frozen lake, there is activity happening under the frozen layer of ice at the top. Fish still swim. There is still life. God is still at work, even in the midst of our bare reality. Whatever that is for you, please take Habakkuk at his word and say, yet I will rejoice because even in this barren, bare reality, I believe and I know God is at work. And I believe he is, even in the coldest, darkest of times, even through the coldest, longest winter, God is still at work beneath the surface. He is moving. He is progressing. He's making all things new. He's not lying there dormant. He's not doing nothing. God is a God of action, a God of movement, a God who is a forward moving God. God is preparing. God is leading. God is active beneath the surface, readying us for the seasons ahead. So take joy that yet, even in the midst of your bare reality, yet you can still praise God. You can still take joy in the God of your salvation because he is at work. Even in those darkest places, you cannot see him. He is still at work. And we can take joy in that. There's a final note I want to share with you this morning, and it comes in the very last verse that I read, because Habakkuk uses another image from nature. And he says this, The sovereign Lord will make me as sure-footed as a mountain goat and bring me safely over the mountains and in the high places. If you've ever seen a mountain goat or an ibex in Israel, you would be amazed at how incredibly agile and skilled and sure-footed they are in being able to scale incredibly sharp, steep ravines, rocky cliff faces, dangerous places, scaling those walls, cliff faces, almost at 90 degree angles, being able to somehow defy gravity in navigating a way through those mountain faces up to the very high points where they can be safe from predators. The mountain ibex is an, an amazing and incredible creature that God made. And many of them live on the mountain sides in Israel. So you can imagine those exiled Israelites dreaming of those ibexes that they knew so well in their homeland who were so agile in being able to navigate the tricky and treacherous cliff faces in their journey in keeping safe and moving forwards. It's that same God who made the mountain goat so agile, so able to pivot and be sure-footed 
lightly stepping in some places, but more heavily treading in others according to its balance and staying on those mountainside cliffs. It's that same God who enables us also to be agile, to be sure-footed, to be able to pivot according to our circumstances. It's the same God who, even through the cold, dark season of winter, in the midst of our bleakness and our bare realities, gives us the ability to be able to skillfully navigate those circumstances as we need to, to be sure-footed, to be agile, to be able to pivot, change direction, change our balance, do what is necessary to do in order to keep moving forwards. So remember, in the midst of your bare reality, and it might be the only time I ever refer to you in this way, but God's word gives us this picture that in many ways we are mountain goats, able to navigate and journey in the high places safely and securely because God is with us and God has equipped us and enabled us to be able to journey through dark and tricky and dangerous times in our lives. That same God is the one who is with you, even in your reality, your bare reality at this time, in the coldness, in the darkness, in the stillness of winter. He's there at work under the surface. He's there encouraging us to move forwards. He's there enabling us and skilling us to move through this season into the warmer, more productive seasons to come. So we can give thanks to God for that at the very least in this, in this time of our bare realities. May God bless you, mountain goat, as you continue to journey through these dark times. May God give you a deep sense of joy deep within in the knowledge that he is still doing a remarkable thing with you and that you are still on the journey of your life following Jesus and he is taking you forwards to better places, to the seasons of bounty that are still to come in your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that even through winter, even through the barest times, our bare realities, that we can trust in your providential goodness and trust that you are still at work and that you are doing a good thing, a new thing, a wonderful thing. Lord, we give thanks and we take joy that yet in the most bleakest of circumstances, we know that you are the God of our salvation and that you are still at work and that you have not abandoned us, that you still walk with us, you still carry us, you still are our God. We give thanks for that. Lord, we praise you because you are the God of all seasons, even the cold and the dark ones. Bless us, Lord as we continue with agility, with care, with wisdom, but with surety move forwards through this season and through our reality at this time. Bless us and strengthen us, Lord, as we do that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. prayer of benediction as we conclude this morning. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only God, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, be all glory, majesty, dominion and power both now and forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you.
this week as you go about journeying through these cold times. I look forward to sharing with you again next Sunday as we talk about the fact that we are very, very close to the winter solstice, that being the shortest day of daylight in our calendar. And we'll have a bit more of a a discussion around how winter continues to speak into our reality, our faith and our life. May God bless you this week. We will see you again here in this place, in this online community of Sunshine Salvos. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.